Hey guys, welcome back to Break Fury. This just came in from Break Mania, but first, before we get into this, if you haven't subscribed yet, be sure to hit that subscribe button and hit the like button. So you hit the like button if you do like the video and click that notification bell so you never miss out on another video. Now let's get right into this. This is a package I got from Break Mania. I ordered it a while back on pre-order because I something I didn't really want to miss out on. So I'm just gonna I'm gonna get this open and then I will show you what's inside. So I got Brick Mania's Panzer 38T. One little kit, 135th scale, of course, like all Brick Mania's kits. Does not go very many thick. This is a German light tank used in the early parts of World War II. This, was, this particular one was designed by Daniel Siskind. So let's get into the history of this tank. The Panzer 38T, originally called the CKD LT VZ 38, was a light tank designed and produced by Czechoslovakia in the 1930s. It was incorporated into the German Wehrmacht following the annexation of Czechoslovakia by, the, by Nazi Germany. The Wehrmacht would, would use the Panzer 38T in the invasion of Poland, the invasion of France in Operation Barbarossa, the invasion of the Soviet Union. Panzer, Panzer 38T entered production by CKD in 1939 and was taken out of production in 1944, 1942 when it, when its main 37mm gun was deemed inadequate. The armour plating was also not the best as the metal would tend to shatter when hit by a, by a high powered anti-tank round. The tank had an, tank had an overall weight of, of 9.725 to 9.85 tonnes. I had a crew of four and was powered by a six cylinder engine. I'm not going to say the actual, the exact make of a, with 123.3 horsepower gas and, and ran on a fuel of gasoline. After it, after it was taken out of production, the, the tank's hull was later used as the base for the, for the Jagdpanzer 38T, the Jagdpanzer 38T or Hetzer. And the. Okay, so let's open up this box and have a look at what is inside. I so I can get off this the plastic. Okay. Sorry about that knife rolling around. Let's get this off. Yeah, the plastic is not off. And Let's take a look inside. So, Brick Mania box number 40. It is set 2260 and I got number 380. This is the 380th kit produced. And if like it says, winners aren't born, they're built. Thank you for supporting Rick Mania. Daniel Siskin, Commander in Chief. And then there is Daniel Siskin's signature. If you don't know, Daniel Siskin is the founder of Brick Mania. And here we have the, the instructions. Back of instructions. And I can pick them up. Here are the stickers. These are white crosses. And then different numbers and the standard just classic German Balkan Kreutz or yeah, Iron Cross and then for, I'm not sure if I said I, said so, I might be wrong with that and all the pieces which is of course the old Lego bought from Brickling which is why Brick Mania is so expensive let's get into the build three two one go
And here is the completed Panzer 38T by Brickmania, designed by Daniel Fiskund, who is the head of Brickmania, and also the designer of the original Lego, Lego, I say Lego Ideas, Lego Blacksmith Shop, and I say original, it was the first fan-designed Lego set, it was the Blacksmith Shop, and also the first fan-created model kit, because Dan Siskin did originally sell it as a kit. Anyway, now let's focus on the Panzer 38T. So, the turret, of course, can rotate 360 degrees. The, just, just this antenna here, which is made of a Lego fencing sword piece, or foil, if you want to be technical. So yeah, it can rotate 360 degrees, but the antenna gets in the way. Put that back on. The gun does ele oh. <laughs> The gun elevates. But it does not depress. It's not built that way. The collection machine gun does not move at all. You can, of course, fit a minifig inside the turret if I if I can open the hatch. But that's not what I meant to do. Everything always goes wrong when you film. You can fit a minifig inside the hatch. Let me just grab one. I'll go with this guy. So yeah, this is definitely not a military personnel, but you can, as you can see, fit a figure inside the hatch. This is actually a guy from a hidden side set, which I will eventually review. But yeah, you can fit a minifig in the hatch. Unfortunately, you can't fit any minifigs in the hull, obviously. It's far too small. Then, the tracks don't really roll that well on this surface. They roll okay going backwards, but they really don't roll very well going forwards, at least on this surface. They can, yeah, I do find, on this one, you, you can, well, it does sometimes jam. This one, it jams, on this side, it sometimes jams, but most of the time you can just pull it. On this side, however, it does jam every, try, every time, or most times you try to pull it forward. There is unfortunately no suspension in this thing. It's just far too small for that. And that's pretty much it. There's some details like the exhaust on the back. There's an axe here on the side. And I'm assuming this is an escape hatch, because that is, I believe there was an escape hatch on the back of this thing. At least there was on the tank destroyer version, which I actually have a scale model of here, just for a simple, just for scale. This model, this, this kit is built to 130th scale, as is this model. So you can see, this is the lay this is the tank destroyer version of or the Hetzer. Yag the Jagdpanther. The Jagdpanther. No, no, the Jagdpanzer 3018. It's the same chassis. And then so it's about the same length as you can see. I believe it was I believe it is wider than the Panzer. Yeah, it is very so slightly ever so slightly wider than this model. And then the cat, the, this model is ever so slightly wider than this, though that might be because this is Lego and it has to fit a certain grid. I don't know how to say it, but I just brought this model in for it to compare. You can't even really see, so I'm just pull back a bit. There you go. That's what the backs look like. But other than that, it is pretty much the same size. Of course, this is taller as it has a turret. And this is just a casement. So that is pretty much it. And I do want to go over these stickers. I have the later war stickers or 1940 stickers with the turret number and then the iron cross or whatever, what, or whatever it's called. I didn't go for the stickers that you see, you see on the box with the, the big white cross and the numbers. Because so this is what you would most more likely see. This is these are what it, the markings the tanks would have had during the invasion of Poland, nineteen thirty nine. But the Germans switched to the turret numbers and these iron crosses on the hull after the invasion of Poland. Because basically, this white cross act is basically a big bullseye for Polish gunners and 
they tend, they, I believe they lost a lot of tanks that way. I'm just taking this from Brickmania's designer's desk of this tank. You can do your own research into why they changed the markings of the tank if you, if you so wish. But that is it for this video. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And hit that notification bell so you can you never miss out on another video. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.